In this video, we are going to show how to create and set up a Padlet. So first we're going to access the Padlet website and over on the left, you can sign up for a free account or if you already have an account, you can log in with Google. And if you're signing up, um, we recommend signing up with Google so that you can log in with Google moving forward. So once you're logged in, you will have a menu on the left where you can access your different Padlets. So it will open up with your made Padlets. You can also access recent Padlets. So this will include the Padlets you have made as well as Padlets that were recently shared with you. Then you've got your made Padlets here, then your shared Padlets. So any Padlets that you've been added to as a member any Padlets that you have liked, and then your archived Padlets. So this would be Padlets that you have made that you have archived. In the upper right corner, you can click Make a Padlet, and this is where you will um, be able to choose what type of Padlet to create. There are lots of options. You can preview what they look like. This is a wall type, which is kind of the classic type of Padlet. And then you can have a stream where everything is in one stream, kind of like a Facebook wall. Then a grid is very similar to the wall. And then a shelf. If you have multiple questions or prompts that you would like students to respond to, you can set those up in columns across your Padlet. So that's the shelf option. You can have students post um, onto a map and uh, you can set different maps as the background and then have them add uh, points to the map. So that is the map feature. Then Canvas would be a kind of free form um, Padlet. So that's good for um, like word maps and uh, things like that, charts. You can also set up a timeline um, where students can um, add their content in a uh, timeline. Uh, so those are the different options. We're going to uh, create a wall uh, example here. And once you create, it will um, give you some defaults here on the right. So you'll want to give your Padlet a title. So we'll create a reflection Padlet where students would respond with um, their thoughts um, about how things have been going. So we'll put in our description with the prompt and directions. You can choose an icon to represent your Padlet. You can add your own icon. So if you have a picture that's saved to your computer or your drive, or you can search for an emoji that will fit your theme. So we're gonna have a thinking emoji since we have a reflection prompt. You can change the wallpaper or the background um, image. So you can choose from colors, gradients, textures and patterns or pictures. So you can scroll through and choose a um, picture that fits your theme and select that. You can also add your own wallpaper if you have a picture saved. You can choose to have um, a dark theme or a light theme for the text posts, and you can choose a default font. You can also set some settings, so whether or not um, your participants can comment on each other's posts or react to those posts, you can also set it up so it's moderated, so any post goes to you first as the teacher to approve. Once you have that all set up, you can click next and then start posting. And now your Padlet is ready um, to share with students. So you'll click that share button and then you can set up your privacy options. So the default is secret and can write, which is the most universal um, option that you'll probably want to stick with. Uh, private is private to you only. You can have it password protected and share that with your students. Secret means that you'll be able to share the link and your students will be able to access it only if they have the link. Public means that anyone can search for it and see it. Then you can change how they interact with your Padlet. Either they can read it only. That would be if you created a Padlet and added all of the posts as a resource bank or if anyone can edit each other's posts. So the most common is that editors um, or visitors can write on the Padlet. 
and then you can choose how you want to share it with a link, a QR code, or sharing it directly to Google Classroom. Another option down at the bottom, after your students have added their responses to your Padlet, you might want to save a copy. So you can save it as a picture, a PDF, or a spreadsheet, or you can print a copy from there. So that is in that share um, icon button in the upper right. Now, if you create a shelf option, we'll go through those steps quickly to show um, how to set up a shelf option since that is also a common uh, Padlet option. So we've set our icon here and our directions. And now we're going to set our background, our wallpaper. And now we are ready to start posting. So for a shelf, you will need to add your sections or columns before you share it with students. So we are going to create a KWL chart. So we need to add those sections for our students to respond to. So we've got our what we already know, what we want to know, and what we've learned, and then any additional questions. We'll add those sections. Now they each have a plus sign underneath those sections so students can respond directly to those questions or prompts. We are now ready to share now that we have our sections included in our shelf format of a Padlet. If you click on the three dots, there are some other options. You can change the format. So if you started with a wall and you decide you want to switch it to a shelf, you can change that format um, from within your Padlet. And you can also modify um, any of the description or things like that from there. And you can clear out all the posts and reuse again. So that is how you set up your Padlet um, and share with students.